everyone, we're looking at the shark brain today. And to access the brain, we're going to be removing the top part of the chondrocranium. Uh, the best way to do that is to first skin the top of the shark's head so you can see where you're going, and skin from behind the spiracles forward. After that, we'll be cutting through the chondrocranium, and I would start with that middle compartment, and then you work your way outwards to find the nerves. You don't have to be very delicate about cutting through muscle here. We will be removing this muscle anyway, just to access the back of the skull. So you can be pretty um, coarse about this part. And now once you get to just before the eyes, like I said, this is all going to be removed as we work our way down through the chondrocranium. And as you start, as you just pass the spiracles, you're seeing now that the skin is just covering chondrocranium directly. So at this point, you can firmly grab the flap that you've made and pull forward towards the nose. As you pull, you'll see that you can see some nerves emerging from the chondrocranium right here. These are the superficial ophthalmic trunks on either side. So you want to maybe protect those as you're pulling. So be mindful of that nervous tissue, but you can still pull pretty firmly towards the nose. From here, we can see that rostrum. And to work our way back towards the brain, you're going to see a little archway here, kind of a little dome. Most of our cerebellum is under here and our cerebrum is under here. We're going to remove this surface cartilage. So I would go from the front towards the back, kind of going along each side of where the brain is, cutting shallowly through the cartilage and removing pieces at a time. This material in the front is just uh, rostral jelly and cartilage, so you can remove this material. What you're looking for is a textured, you can kind of see it down right in there in that cavity. We're looking for nervous tissue, so this yellow color. Notice I'm working around the sides of, the, of this domed area, so when you're cutting along the sides, just be very shallow and very careful because there's a small little nerve running here that would be good to keep intact just for visibility. Now that we've cut the main channel into the shark skull, we can see the main parts of the brain. So looking down here, we can see the cerebrum, the cerebellum, the spiracles of the cerebellum on either side, and the medulla oblongata. So from there, now we will work our way outwards. You only have to do one side of your shark. And when you are dissecting, essentially you're removing all of the covering cartilage. Um, so that we can take the eye and flip it up to see the nerves that are running underneath. So to free the eyeball so you can move it back out of the way and look at structures underneath, you will be removing the cartilage of the supraorbital crest and also removing connective tissue that's holding the eye down into that socket. As you start this part of the dissection, keep an eye out for these tiny little trochlear nerves. They depart, they depart the brain and enter right into this little trochlear foramen. And we have one on each side. The reason that we are only dissecting 
one side of the shark's skull is both for time and to keep at least one of these trochlear nerves intact if you can. If it is broken, that's perfectly fine. Just make sure that you know where to look for it. Now, as you're trying to keep the trochlear nerve intact, you can see where it emerges in the orbit through that trochlear foramen. So I would recommend leaving cartilage protecting it for as long as possible. So just cut on either side so you have this little bridge that is protecting your trochlear nerve. Also keep an eye out for your superficial ophthalmic trunk here. Um, it descends through the cartilage, but keep an eye out. So maybe as you're cutting from the front, use that nerve as your guide so you don't accidentally sever it. So I'm leaving this little piece of cartilage here. You can see the trochlear nerve coming into that cartilage from the medial side and exiting towards that muscle of the eye. So we're leaving that piece of cartilage in just for now. Now this part of the skull, you'll be going through, so you may see some structures that are part of your semicircular canals, which have to do with spatial orientation. Um, we are removing those completely to see the nerves underneath, but this is that otic area, that inner ear part of the shark. You can see one of those semicircular canals right here. So that actually just came right out of the cartilage. So in this area, it can be a little confusing, but essentially everything at the level of the medulla oblongata up can be removed. All of the nerves you're looking for are below this level. They're coming out from the, the medulla oblongata or slightly below it. Because this is the semicircular canal area, you can actually see fibers of that vestibulocochlear auditory nerve 8 coming through right here. And again, because we are removing this area, all that will remain are these little pieces of nerve. At this point, if you're nervous about cutting down here, um, use your sharp probe to sort of pick away and soften the cartilage around where you can see the nerves passing through. You can see this nerve, this superficial ophthalmic trunk, passing underneath this thin layer of cartilage. So you can actually just scratch at it and weaken the cartilage so that you don't risk the nerve when you pry it off.
Um, around the spiracle, you will want to watch out for this hyomandibular branch of the facial, which I have inelegantly severed. So we'll look at it on the other side. As you're going around the eyeball, you will need to lift that eye up and remove the connective tissue that's anchoring it down there. And after that, there's not too much cleaning underneath. You just need to see your infraorbital trunk and the branches, the maxillary and mucal branches that come off of it. As you're cleaning the top of your eye, you will see a small nerve running across the back, kind of parallel to your superficial ophthalmic trunk. This is your deep ophthalmic nerve, the deep ophthalmic branch specifically of the trigeminal. Your superficial ophthalmic trunk contains fibers from five and seven. The deep ophthalmic trunk just contains fibers from nerve five, the trigeminal. You can actually separate that a little bit from the connective tissue. And if you follow it, even though it's going across the back of the eye, notice that it is not going to any of the eye muscles. It's not going to your superior oblique. It's not going to any of the rectus muscles that are moving the eye. Um, peer down there for our optic nerve. Right down here, fairly robust nerve underneath your trochlear. So we're following that superficial ophthalmic trunk right here. So we're following that deep ophthalmic nerve of the trigeminal forward. And that would be continuing on to go forward towards the rostrum. It would pass through this anterior orbital shelf running parallel to your superficial ophthalmic trunk. So what we're looking for here then is a cleared off center part of your brain, investigation of the branching, the eyeball being able to lift up to look at your infraorbital trunk down here, and that material cleared out. 